It is The Riot on Radio U. This is our podcast. Welcome. Happy Monday. Hopefully everybody had a great weekend. Mm-hmm. Anybody do anything fun? Did you? Um, I started Christmas shopping and get, gift wrapping. and Gift wrapping? I did. I did. I, wow. I started all of it. Because honestly, this, well, I still have something this weekend, but... This is kind of like the last weekend that I don't have anything holiday related. Okay. Then I literally have something like almost every Saturday and Sunday. Well, Christmas is like short. Yes. When you start talking about weekends, mm-hmm. not weeks, so, by the time you get to Thanksgiving, if you think Thanksgiving weekend, then I think you have three weekends till Christmas. It's not a lot. And even a lot of my family stuff is earlier in December. So I got to get started. And I was like, all right, I'm getting started. So I did a lot. Works for me. If not, it'll be delivered this week. So I'll be pack. You know, I'll be wrapping it then this week. Wow, I'm impressed. I this has been the year that I've been kind of lazy waiting. about it. No, You're waiting. I, normally I do almost all my Christmas shopping like two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I basically haven't done any yet. Actually, hmm. is this wait? What is it um, from the Voice of the Future uh, for Scrooge? The uh, Voice of Christmas Future. Yeah, like I'm the, the Voice of, of the future. future. Like you need to do this, Ebenezer. <laughs> Well, hey, today in the podcast, you will find us discussing Chuck E. Cheese, Charlie's Angels, not related, uh, Starbucks bathrooms, KFC Christmas buffets, what it's like to get fired when you're rich. Obi has a a take on this. I'm amazed by it. (laughs) Uh, Food fight, Black Friday talk, Buddy the Elf, Mm -hmm. the Frappuccino edition. It's actually a great looking drink. It kind of is. Secret Sisters and uh, Nikki's Christmas tree problem. Wow. So enjoy today's podcast. There won't be a podcast tomorrow. I'm not going to be in. It will be out, but it'll be back Wednesday. It will be. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. They even make morning people want to reach for the snooze button. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. I think I'm grumpy. Grumpy today? Yeah. Grumpy day. (laughs) Thanks for the heads up for everybody. (laughs) What do you... What do you do with that? You know, I mean, it's not acknowledging like, it is the first important it, step to doing it. I think you're right. I think it's it's the realization of like, hey, it's not you. It's definitely me. That way, none of us felt weird. Yeah, it's definitely me. <laughs> and, Aww, and maybe it'll shake out later today. You know, we'll just work on it. If not, what's wrong with the grumpy day every so often? Well, OK, I thought about that. And my answer is. That if I didn't do this, I think I could, you can kind of hide a grumpy day. I got to talk for three hours, <laughs> six hours, 18 hours. I don't know. But, you know, from the, uh, wait, the overflow of the heart, the mouth uh, speaks. Eventually it would have come out. Yeah. So I, I'm trying. I don't want it to come out. I don't want to punish you or anybody else. It's just, it's nobody's fault. No, it just, it happens. It just happens. You wake up, Aww, you're grumpy. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But you know what? Uh, I think it came down to, instead of going to the gym, I hit snooze. And I, I'm i mad at myself about that. But you know what else? It was fine. Not mad, though, on the other side. <laughs> part, part of me was like, boy. <laughs> and see, that conflict is what's aggravating it, the grumpiness. Right. Got my coffee. Uh, but once I started drinking it, it tastes like soap because apparently someone didn't, they, you know, you wash the cup, but you don't rinse the cup. <laughs> See the bit, there's a, there's it's a an difference. important two-step process. You can wash the cup, but you want it to, it to build up and you don't want to wash away with soap all that you've spent so long building up. That's flavor. <laughs> I mean, like I was just in my car, like, okay, workout skipped. I got my coffee. Don't really have my coffee. Check, check and check. Went to McDonald's. Uh, they gave me the wrong kind of soda. Aww. And I was just like, you know what, though? It's fine. Like, it's fine. just grumpy. I can't. <laughs> like, today's a day where uh, there's going to be a lot of winning. I mean, on the other hand, uh, I did eat. That's something. Are you fortunate? Look at me. Did it work? To, it all worked out? So far. Okay. The riot is to your ears what all those energy drinks are to your liver. For the love of God, please stop. I can only process so much. The Riot Radio U. So you guys know that there's the riot, but then there's the worst of the riot podcast. And so a lot of people apparently got caught up over the weekend and we have a ton of text messages. And I think just from the worst of riot on Saturday, if you ever get up on Saturday morning at some of our better moments from the previous week. Yeah, so we 
tell you guys, you can text us, and eventually we'll get to it. And lo and behold, here we are. <laughs> so one of the big topics of discussion for us last week was how many streaming services do we subscribe to? I know you could maybe argue or like we just kind of really mean streaming uh, movies or TV show services. Right, right. And so some people are like, well, Xbox Live or PlayStation Network. And it's like, well, you can throw those in if you want to. If, if you don't want to, then it makes you look better. So just as a heads up. And Nikki, we came, you had nine? Eight. Eight. Don't okay. throw an extra one in there. You know, I was just no, confirming. I had just, I had just, just confirming. canceled one. Let's see. So it would have been nine, but, but I had I had a heads up. We might have right. been talking about it, so I wanted to clear them out. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get that number down. <laughs> Bully by one. But some of them I said are seasonal, and they shouldn't be past football or Christmas season. It's fair. So Rich says Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, Disney Plus, and UVerse. Uverse. Yeah, so that's cable. Yeah. So he's got cable, which he's probably paying $280 a month for. <laughs> and then he's got those other things. Maybe not. Uh, let's see. Arthur says he has Netflix only, but he also has cable. I loved people were like, how do you have eight? And then they would tell us, I only have Netflix. And then they'd go on to say, but I still have my parents. And then there's a laundry list right. of them. I'm right. like, well, that's no fair. I just don't take, you know, I pay for mine. Yeah. A lot of people are still borrowing from family members. Which makes apparently you dumb, like me but worse. they still need it. Yeah. I was like, wait, that's so that kind of still counts like you have all those services. You're just and not paying yet. I don't pay for my drugs, but I take it from my mom. <laughs> I take it from her. From her medicine cabinet. So let's see. Mike says, just to make Nikki feel better Monday, when you guys read this, I have eight streaming services as well. You guys were talking about it on Worst of the Riot podcast. So Nice. Patrick in Indiana, he just texted zero. Oh, well, good for him. Good, so, good, good. Look at him tucking all that money away on his non-server streaming services. And maybe Patrick is borrowing, so. He could be. Maybe he doesn't have to pay for any of them. Could be. Well, feel free to let us know. Either shame us for having too many or call us lightweights for not having enough. <laughs> there was very few that had more than us. Yeah. 8772 Radio U. <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> One day, a heroic time traveler will go back in time to make sure none of this ever happens. Until then, it's the worst of the riot on Radio U. You know, it's a controversy because controversies drive clicks. Like if it's if I just say that here's a news story, you'd be like, oh my gosh. But if I say the Starbucks controversy, you'd be like, oh my gosh. Suddenly people are paying attention more. I want to know a little bit about the controversy. Uh, you recall what last year, two years ago, uh, there was a whole kerfuffle about two guys that were asked to leave um, and Starbucks restrooms were only supposed to be for customers. And now Starbucks is like, no bathroom for all. Everyone can come in and use our bathroom. No one will say anything. You just come in and use the bathroom. So basically, no questions asked where previously they had preferred if you would have been a customer. Right. Uh, and so according to this particular study that Starbucks as a whole is experiencing 7% reductions in foot traffic as a result of their new open door bathroom policy. Meaning people don't want to go in because they're... Because there's a bunch of people just using the restroom? Or what does that even mean? What does it even does mean? Does it even mean? I think we're That's... just all moving towards, we don't even like to go in now. We don't like to go into restaurants. We don't like to go into Starbucks. We don't like to go in anywhere. Well, see, that was what I thought. I was like, you so know. So that's driving to bl- that. To blame this on some new policy, <laughs> there's like a million different reasons why foot traffic could be lower than it was a year ago. So was, I wonder what's their foot traffic like numbers for not just for inside for restrooms, but you know how sometimes people just go and make it their office. Right. But not necessarily buy anything. Is right. that down? I uh, don't know the answer to that either. I just know that the University of Texas at Dallas and Boston College did a joint study and they found that foot traffic is down. I'll just tell you this, like say what you will about Starbucks, but you know what? One time I really had to go to the bathroom and I was so glad that they just let me go in and use their bathroom. <laughs> this is so glad. I was so glad that I was able to just go in and use the bathroom. Well, that's good. So you know what? Uh, high five on that Starbucks. I, I appreciated that. 
I really did. It was nice. <laughs> I think the what school was it that was doing the study? A University joint one? of Texas. I think people are just like, yeah, let's do one about Starbucks. That means we get to go there and study <laughs> uh, for this thing. Not study just, you know, doing our schoolwork, okay. but study for a study. I do love that. They're like, okay, we want to do a Starbucks study so that we can always meet there and mm-hmm. it counts as class time. Exactly. So they just came up with this. Let's measure foot traffic. All right. Okay. We'll, we'll just sit here and watch what goes on. Yeah. Foot traffic could also be down because as much as I do appreciate the bathroom, uh, I do feel like they got a real uh, overpriced coffee problem. Oh, no. I feel, like, I feel like that reduces my foot traffic in there from time to time. No, they're just saying people don't want to go in. Whatever. Things are never as bad as they seem, except when it comes to the riot. riot. Then they're worse. They're always worse. It's the riot on Radio U. So, Nikki, what movie did you see this weekend? Um, I might have watched a couple of Christmas movies. Oh, so you didn't make it out to Ford v. Ferrari? No, it did look good, though. I do think it looks good. I actually think it kind of looks interesting. I do think it does look good. I like a good. good competition film. Well, it a little won. history with it. At the box office this it weekend. Did? It did. It did. It brought in... Wait a minute. Like... Boy, you know, why do they have to make this so hard to read? Well, they, um, they know you're reading it, and they just want to make it extra hard for you. So, I they don't know. They it's your grumpy day. I, they knew. <laughs> well, it was number one at the box office this weekend. So, good for them, right? Uh, and then, let's see, it went Ford v. Ferrari. Uh, and then I see that um, Charlie's Angels managed to get in at number three. Uh, so, you know. So Ford versus Ferrari was thirty one million. Thirty one. There it is. Thirty one million. There it is. Midway hit at for eight million, and I think it costs a lot more than that. Do you think so? <laughs> and Charlie's Angels at number three with uh, eight point six million. That was the biggest. They said kind of disappointment because they were relaunching that. They and- marketed it. To death. They did, and at eight point six million for its opening weekend. Yeah. That's not like several weekends out. That's its opening weekend. It's not anywhere near what they thought. The last few weekends have kind of been disappointments. Doctor Sleep, which was that sequel to The Shining, and people are like, "Oh man, it's gonna be, it's gonna be." Oh, <laughs> oh no, nothing. And it made well this weekend. It fell to sixth place. It made six million so far. It's managed to make twenty five million dollars. Yeah. Not as much. You and McGregor did the talk show circuit, what was that, two weeks ago for that movie? And all the talk show people are like, Dr. Sleep, whatever. We hear you're going to be in an Obi Wan TV show. And that's all they <laughs> wanted to talk about. <laughs> Nothing else, not even the movie. It's probably not good. So it looks like this weekend is Frozen 2 and then the Mr. Rogers uh, movie. It's this weekend? For, yeah, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. See, I thought that all came out next week with Thanksgiving. No, it says wide release on November 22nd. Okay. All right. Well, are you uh, excited about? I want to see it. I don't know if I want to go see see it in the theaters. I don't know if I want to see it in the theaters because, you know. Because why? What if I cry? You mean at Mr. Rogers? (laughs) Yeah. Not at Frozen 2. That's what I'm like. I don't don't plan on seeing that. But uh, for the Mr. Rogers one, maybe... I'll see. Maybe I'll go or maybe I'll just wait. I think you crying at the Mr. Rogers movie is a foregone conclusion. It's probably going to happen. It will happen. Because again, the trailer, unless they put everything in the trailer that was going to make you cry from the entire movie. I don't think so. (laughs) You think there's more? I think there's plenty more tears to be shed. (laughs) So that's this weekend. Both of those are out. Mm -hmm. So Tom Hanks being Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Just go ahead and... uh, They're probably handing out tissues at the box office. You get a free pack every time you go in. Obadiah and Nikki tried their hardest. And that's what really matters. This is the worst of the Ryan podcast. Admittedly, it's been a couple of years since I've had a need, an opportunity, a... an invitation to attend Chuck E. Cheese. It's been a while. It's been a hot minute, but I... You know, it does me good to know that somewhere out there in my city, Munch's Make Believe Band (laughs) continues to play to sold out crowds on a nearly weekly basis. The last I heard about it was what it was it a year or two ago with the whole controversy from the YouTube thing of uh, do they reuse the the pizza slices to put the pizza back together? And I I figure like that must have hurt Chuck E. Cheese a bit. (laughs) 
don't you think? Probably. <laughs> like the pizza you leave on the table, they take in yeah, the back like the and reassemble pizza, it. Or like from the buffet, they just put it on out and then they send it out to you. And that, that went around for a while. <laughs> I don't know if it was true, but like that's like one of the saddest things you've ever heard. <laughs> you can see it being true, but you're just not sure. <laughs> saddest things. Uh, but... I'm about to make it a whole lot sadder. If you have any good memories of Chuck E. Cheese as a kid with those weird robots that play music, guess what? That is Munch's Make Believe Band, and they're pulling them out. They're going away. They're canceling the shows. They're being put in storage. Munch's Make Believe Band is going in the vault. <laughs> Until they bring it back years later. and it's, Years later. It was always the awkward thing there. There are over 600 Chuck E. Cheeses in the United States. How is that? Six. Hundred across the United States, and they are all being renovated. And part of the renovation is that all of them are losing the band. So what are they going to do instead? Uh, they say they're going to have an interactive dance floor. It's just going to be like, what's the other thing? Like, uh, they're just going to make it Dave and Buster's. Actually, Minus yes. the bar. They're just going to make it like that. Did you read what else they're doing? Because no. they're removing tokens. They're doing, so oh. you'll have a card now. No, I've seen that before. You get yeah. a Chuck E. Cheese like card that you use oh, okay. instead. Well, that's a very Dave and Buster's thing. But they like all locations are going to be removing tokens. And then after that, I don't know what else they're doing. But they say they're re like they're redoing have a the buffet, logo. Like you have at the casino. <laughs> They could have Dave and Buster's sort of thing. Yeah. They're taking all the grown-up stuff, putting it together, and putting it there. Yeah, so that, I guess, as an adult, you can start having fun at Chuck E. Cheese? No, they well, an adult, but then you teach them young, and then they grow up. <laughs> Man, the Chuck E. Cheese in my neighborhood... <laughs> no, it, I'm not even going to tell you. Not even going to say it? Never it's mind. not worth saying. Let me just... Let me just... No... It's fine. So that's the word. Now, I love this is an article that I was reading online, and their suggestion was you need to take some time now to sell some things so you have enough money to go to Chuck E. Cheese and buy one of the animatronic and pieces. And you buy them? Are they going to sell them off? Or? I, I have no idea what they'll do They'll with just them. sit Maybe. in the back room somewhere. I've seen it. I would swear to you I saw an article a while ago of a guy in Florida who went around and, like, collected like when Showbiz Pizza shut down, he bought a bunch of their stuff. And like he goes around buying things like this. Those are his friends. Yeah. Jerome says too many <laughs> too many people have played Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, and then Chuck E. Cheese, their official statement is that essentially uh, kids are so well entertained now. Like their entertainment at home is so sophisticated. When they come in and see the animatronics, they are not impressed. They're not believing it. They're just like, what is this crap? <laughs> so take it off. They just might as well get rid of it. <laughs> that is a good point. It's a I don't great think any point. of us were ever fooled. <laughs> I somewhere in the back of my mind, so. I seem to remember a time of being like excited when the band would start playing. That's when you're just like you have this innocent joy exactly. about you. Yeah. You don't know the world yet. Yeah. You know, things aren't you're real. Just, you're stupid. <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> it's kind of what it is, right? Yeah. You're just so young and happy, and that is what we miss. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd go back. Uncomfortable silences during that morning carpool. Not a problem. These two never shut up. It's the riot on Radio U. I don't know if you know this, but in the country of Japan, KFC has somehow managed to make itself the default Christmas dinner. Basically what you do. You, you have that on Christmas. You have that on Christmas. Now, in Japan, they don't really celebrate Christmas the way we do in the United States. They don't. We're here. Things like shut down for Christmas Day. There, right. it's actually a really popular like dating holiday. So you go out and do something on Christmas Day. Yeah. I don't even know what an American equivalent to it would be because we... Kind of like Valentine's Day. Like, yes. take away any sort of religious aspect of Christmas, right. and it's just a celebration day of, like, family and friends. Right. And that's basically what it is. So basically what most of your holiday specials are pushing for. What's Christmas? <laughs> What's the true meaning of Christmas? It's about friends. It's about giving. It's not even as much about family. It's a lot more about friends. In Japan. Yes. Mind you that Nikki and I are not firing shots in the war no, no, on Christmas. It's just how it is. I'm just telling you about what things are like in Japan. So KFC became a part of that many, many, many years ago. It was just uh, you went and got KFC and that's what you'd go eat that day. They say it all harkens back to in 1974, KFC heavily advertised themselves as go as Kentucky for Christmas. 
And they say that it just really caught on. And since then, it's been kind of an institution. Well, it turns out that in Tokyo, KFC is going to be... Brace yourself. They're opening a buffet. Oh, doesn't that sound good? It does. (laughs) Not like our KFC KFC buffets, but this seems like a really big one. They say that it is a 50-item KFC buffet. You've been been to a KFC buffet. I've only seen the signs, and it's normally when you're way out from like a major city. Yeah. And normally in a place you'd never stop. I want you to know that I'm... I'm not kidding. I was in the car. We were going somewhere for Radio U, and there were a few of us, and we saw a sign that was like, KFC Buffet, three miles this way. We were like, you know what? Let's just do it. Doesn't matter if we're not hungry. We have to go try it. So we turned off. We went to the KFC to eat, and I, I want it's like, I want you to imagine what it could be like, and I don't mean in a good way. There was a woman in there with like 10 kids. Yeah. Uh, she was pregnant. She was, in fact, barefoot. So were a couple of her kids. Yeah. One of them was running around barefoot in a diaper that needed changed. Oh. And I'm like, this like, is, All right, this yeah. is it. <laughs> Just let's take another trip to the buffet. If you've not seen KFC in other countries, um, it is a bit more, depending on where you're at, could be considered like put together a bit more. Well, let me give you some perspective. Okay. (laughs) If you want to do the all you can eat buffet at this Tokyo Tokyo KFC, 18 bucks for lunch, about $25 for dinner. You get about 50 items for 90 minutes and then they're doing unlimited drinks. So unlimited alcohol for an extra $12. So for 90 minutes, it's all you can drink for $12? And That's eat. a terrible idea. And eat. That whole thing is a terrible <laughs> idea. Oh, my gosh. Oh, but it just sounds good. Having all that sounds really nice. Oh, wow. But it's not here in the United States. No, you'll have to go to Japan for that. Which Maybe if you were planning a trip for Christmas. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, it's nice to go to a different country and area at Christmas time. Sure it is. The worst podcast with the best listeners. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Want to say hi to Scott. Nikki, he just texted. He says there's a KFC buffet about uh, 15 minutes from here. Oh, really? Yeah. We also have a Pizza Hut buffet. Yeah, but, you know, those are all over, aren't they? Uh, I don't think so. No? I, I, I think, you know, those places, their their buffet versions are few and far between. Yeah, that... That pizza buffet is not very good. I like it. It's got I, the salad from a bag. I mean, the hard boiled egg. <laughs> I like it. It's such bad lettuce. Bag, but there's bag something, salad and hard boiled eggs. And like They're a really, thousand really island doing dressing it. every so often. Really and then it. I basically just eat the breadsticks. Like, I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah. So it's $8 for all you can eat breadsticks. And salad. And a cinnamon breadstick as well. Ooh, that's good too. And then you dip it in the pudding, which is also on the buffet by the salad. Yeah, so you put, uh, and that is homemade fresh pudding. No, it's from a tub. Are you? It is from a tub. Actually, maybe a bag. It might not even be tub worthy. It's from a bag. It comes in a tub, but there's a bag in the tub. And everybody's kind of anxious because you're sitting there (laughs) waiting for them to bring out the pizza and you don't want to, you know, jump too much, but you're waiting. Yeah. So I love it. There is, okay. I'm glad you brought that up because I do feel like when you go to a pizza buffet, more so than any other buffet, there is this real pressure of like, okay, I'm, I'm going to get my money's worth in here. Well, yeah, I'm going to get my money's that's worth. That's why it's like a cheat day. You're allowed to have all the pizza that you can eat. And so they keep bringing out pizzas and you can just feel the tension in the room as people are like, there it is. There it is. Oh my gosh, there it is. And then what they kind bring is you, it? What kind is it? They all bring right. you the, the lame one that no one likes. With all the veggies. It's a veggie pizza. Nobody wants this trash. Which is why you need to look to the breadsticks. That's a really quiet area of the buffet that it's basically a cheese pizza. If you get the cheese breadsticks, put a little sauce on it. It's fine. There's something to that. There's something to that. Well, if you guys are wondering, uh, Nikki's not going to be here tomorrow. She's going to be recovering from her Pizza Hut buffet trip. Actually, I am not going to be in tomorrow. That's actually real. I don't want you guys to worry Yeah, (laughs) that I won't be here tomorrow. She's got a point. Tomorrow, I will be in hosting Worst of the Riot. Uh, Nikki will not, and I will be answering phone calls. Not text messages, you understand. 
phone calls all morning of people going, where's Nikki? Concern. Is she okay? I appreciate the concerns. Well, you know I can't come in tomorrow. Oh, but I is sick and people are like, well, it's nice to have a break. It's good that he, it's good that he's able to be quiet Nikki's at, gone. at home. Nikki's gone. And people are like, <laughs> is she okay? What does she need? I'm starting a meal train right now. All right, we're gonna get her fed. Does also, she need someone to bring her medication? Can I take I her will to the bring doctor? Her cheese breadsticks. I'm gonna mow her lawn, <laughs> clean her windows. Like I'll anything also, I can to help her. I'll also not be in next week for Thanksgiving, so I'll be in next Friday for the Black Friday show that we do, but um, not next week. It's good. Yay! Ooh, ooh. I'll also be in or hosting ho, Worst ho, of the ho. Riot next week. <laughs> Taking all the questions and comments and concerns. Is she okay? I'm totally fine. Yeah, she's fine. Stop calling. No, I, I donate to this station. I call what I want. <laughs> I gave during the last fundraiser, and all I got was this crappy morning show. This is The Riot on Listener Supported Radio U. So I don't I don't really keep track of how McDonald's is doing on the business side, but Steve Easterbrook, is that his name? Yeah, he was the CEO of McDonald's. He has been fired. Yeah, he was fired a few weeks ago. Now, I want you to imagine what happens to you if you're fired from your job. Uh, it could be that, you know, you're still living at home, so your parents are just disappointed. You know, and that's that's where it goes. And your dad's like, I still need money for that car insurance, son. <laughs> or, you know, with next week being, you know, Thanksgiving, if you're going home, they'll find out then. For, yeah. OK. Maybe so, you're still managing living it on your own. If you're living on your own, though, getting fired is like, OK, if I don't get some money soon, I have nowhere to live, you know, whatever. But when you're apparently when you're rich and you get fired, you just get richer. That's how that that's how that works. You get fired and they pay you to get fired. Did you not know that? They get paid a lot, more than you'll ever make. He got somewhere north of 70 million dollars as severance. But I think they're just like buying him out to make him leave. Shut up. Can I get bought out? Would you, somebody you're please? not you're not a part of some package though. I know. I so know. you should you should have like signed up and said, "Hey, uh, if you don't want me here, you gotta you gotta buy me out. And that's that. To be clear, that's like five years of his salary. Radio, you would just be like, okay, here's a twenty dollar bill, kid. Get lost. Just leave, will just you? Get, just get out. <laughs> and if you want McNuggets, we'll give you some. Just get out. I'll show you on Black Friday. This is two Blu-rays. <laughs> it's next week. So it's it's a different world when you're a CEO. It's of a mi- major corporation. It's just mind-blowing to think that for the majority of society, a job loss is a major blow. But if you're rich enough, a job loss is more money. What? You shouldn't have to get another job. It's crazy. That, that should is, be it. It's amazing. I want in that world. How do I get in? It's too late. Is there just a door where you walk in? It's too or late. Like- we live in the world where at least we get to eat cereal as part of our work in the morning. We're bringing our food in. All right. Well, that's something. That's but- all we get. <laughs> here's here's life for the riot. Uh, you guys can have as much cereal as you want. There's no spoons. <laughs> we can't have spoons here. There and I don't know no, why. They're, they're the I'll first to go. No, and I'll we just, never restock them. I'll tell you why, Nikki. Why? Uh, if you guys were paying attention during the fall fundraiser, we didn't meet our goals. And that's where And so it, when they sat down for the budget, they were like, okay, we can get two out of the three plastic wear. No. Which, which two will it be? We have to make some cuts. Because for knives, we have a small amount of knives. And those will be gone. But I'd rather have spoons. But we have a ton of forks. Would you take spoons over forks? Well, so I, I kind of would. Maybe. Man, this feels like a whole other discussion we should have later. So when we're eating our food fight stuff and you're like, why are you guys eating cereal with forks? I want you to know we just don't have any spoons. We don't have anything else. So don't bring it up. So shut up. <laughs> just a little sensitive about it. <laughs> we didn't get fired from McDonald's. <laughs> We don't have $75 million to buy plastic spoons. That really bugs you, doesn't it? It does bug me. It does. The riot has now been downloaded. Uh, I hope you installed some antivirus. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Ah, it is the riot. We've waited until the last moment to add the milk to the Fruit Loops birthday cake edition. It's a strawberry flavor. I just don't believe in milk. Until the absolute, like, you have to be ready to put it in your mouth. I know, but for some cereal, I, I actually don't mind when it gets a little soggy, so I don't mind. What's wrong with you? Some, 
Is that it? I'm handing it this way. Thank you. So this is the limited edition uh, birthday cake. It's strawberry, though, Fruit Loop flavors. And if you were not with us, we have no spoons. It is so sad to Left see you in the, there trying to in the break eat room. cereal for the fork. So all we had was forks Radio left. RadioU.com slash donate. We need the support. Um, <laughs> you know, when you don't your reach support. your goal during the fundraiser, it is tough. It's but tough out there, Nikki. We have all the forks we could possibly need. So but we, many, so many we forks. We don't have any spoons. So many forks. So let's talk about, let's do a smell test here. It's strawberry cake. It really just smells like... Strawberry Way, powder. Super strawberry, uh, I guess, Fruit Loop. Like Nesquik, ne- what is it, Nesquik? Yeah, it's probably the same brand, so it's the same chemical. So the strawberry powder? Mm-hmm. Mm, what do we think about it? Let it just melt in the mouth. There's more strawberry before you actually taste it from the smell, but it's actually not too strawberry. Do you think? I don't feel like I taste anything. Is it just the pink ones? Are those the only things, strawberry? No, remember, Fruit Loops all have the same flavor. Oh, they do? It's just a trick? Yeah. It's a trick of the mind? Wow. It's always I been don't that get way. a lot of strawberry at all. But mm-hmm. you smell a lot of strawberry. Strong strawberry smell. I want you to take a bite and think about that freeze-dried astronaut ice cream. <laughs> You shouldn't Seriously. have to do that so much. Seriously. I know, but I'm just telling you, that's what all of a sudden it was like, wait a minute. Mm. Are we at a museum? Did no. I just pay $4 for... I expected to have a way more artificial strawberry cake taste. Or like frosting. You know, frosting has you know a little bit more flavor to it. I feel like I'm eating a candle. A candle? <laughs> yeah, kind of. That's it, the, the aftertaste got, of it? To me, it's just a real chemical-y taste. It is not a... And I really don't taste birth. Like, do you get a cake flavor out of that at all? Not so much. Not so much. That's, you know what? I, which I actually don't mind because I don't like strawberry as much. But So it doesn't bug me. Uh, but I would have thought it would have had more. They're probably in a room laughing somewhere right now because they're like, like they're it's just no strawberry. They just put the smell it's on it. Just Fruit Loops. <laughs> it's all like it nothing's is. changed. That is all that's there. It's the limited edition uh, Fruit Loops uh, birthday cake flavor. Strawberry birthday cake. I got nothing. I mean, I, I taste it. It's there. It's faint. Right? It's very, it is faint, and I feel like it's way more like everything else. Once your mouth kind of clears out, and then you're like, I guess it tastes like other strawberry-flavored foods. It doesn't really taste like strawberry, but it tastes like strawberry-flavored things. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want any more. I mean, right. I'll, I'll probably go ahead and sympathy eat the rest you, of this cup. You're not going to ignore the rest of the cup. We'll finish that much. Yeah, I'll probably go ahead with that. But I mean, like, as far as do I have a future in the strawberry business here? I don't think so. So I think our next food fight needs to be the limited edition Pringles, the roasted, like the turkey roasted ones. Roasted turkey. Oh, maybe that's what, maybe we'll have a, a Thanksgiving on-air feast with <laughs> turkey and a dessert soda. <laughs> all we've got left. Hey, so what do you think of Obadiah? The truth is, he's not a very nice person. Okay, well, what about Nikki? The very best day is. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. So, if you haven't yet, you need to go over to riot.radiou.com and follow me on Twitter. And you're like, dude, I don't want to get on Twitter. Twitter's stupid. I don't want to tweet anymore. Check this out. Um, We did this last year, and I think the year before last, but there's a website where I go to find video game deals, and they build, there's some guy, it's just somebody in their community that puts together this uh, Google spreadsheet doc. Oh, the one. Remember that? Oh my gosh, yes, every year. It's like every video game, movie, like just a bunch of all this electronic stuff, and it is a huge spreadsheet, and the guy just lists them all. And then you can look right across the list of where it's the cheapest. And he'll have uh, Best Buy, Target, Meyer, Walmart, GameStop, Amazon. And it'll just show you what as like he up, he updates it and what is the current Black Friday price on an item at each of those retailers. And then he'll highlight the one 
that is the cheapest. Mm. So, like, for example, here, he's, like, got Division 2 on the PlayStation 4. You can see that it's going to be $15 at Best Buy and $15 at Target and $15 at Meyer. So, I'm sorry, it doesn't show, like, currently what it is. It just shows for the Black this Friday deals. This is just deals. for Black Friday. So, so it's not, coming. Yeah, it's not one of those things where you'd look at this and be like, man, I just went over there and looked at it and I didn't see it anywhere. No, it's, it's upcoming. It's for next weekend. Exactly. So, this would be your chance to, uh, you know, win the game of <laughs> shopping cheap. I love that this guy does this every year. It's it's really impressive. And you know what? I've totally used it. Uh, I've used it for the last couple of years to pick things up. I don't have, I think I have any video games that I'm on the lookout for for Black Friday this year. Uh, maybe, no, not really. Uh, so uh, that part doesn't help me very much. But I, I will be on the lookout for some uh, movies and stuff, and that's something that I buy. But they don't do buy. movies on this list? They do. If you look down at the bottom, they are some down they're there. sorted by games, consoles, and movies, and they uh, he's got different sheets <laughs> on it so that you can flip back and forth in the spreadsheet on the sheets. Listen, to him, this was fun. To everybody yeah. else, this would be like, why are you doing this? But to him, he has a great time. Well, it's one of those things where... It's like, useful. I appreciate it. He's providing a public service. Every year, I take a look at this guy's spreadsheet, and it... I actually use his spreadsheet to build my own spreadsheet to decide where I'm going to buy what if I want it on Black Friday. So if you're into buying video games or movies or console stuff for Black Friday. um, I'm tweeting it out right now. This guy has a link to his Google Doc that shows it all for where it's going to be and for what price. So I don't even know what his name is. I could probably dig for it. But I think it's Nick. You know who you are. (laughs) And listen, (laughs) high five right now. Thanks for doing this every year. Using advanced technology, we've digitized and transcoded Obadiah and Nikki into a purely digital format. This is the Worst of the Riot podcast. Now, I said I was going to help you make your barista hate you, which they secretly already do. So (laughs) You might as well make it official. You might as well make it official. Uh, Have you heard of the Buddy the Elf Frappuccino? Is there one? Is it a specialty drink? Well, it's or is it a off menu thing? It's definitely not on menu. Like that's not a thing. The Buddy the Elf Frappuccino is a uh, matcha and peppermint. So uh, here's what you do. Um, oh my gosh! It has a hundred and sixteen grams. It. Don't of, look at it. Here's what it is. You order a matcha green tea frappuccino. Yeah. Okay. Then you ask for peppermint syrup. Then you get whipped cream, and then you ask for Christmas sprinkles on the top. Nice. And they say that's their thing for the Buddy the Elf Frappuccino. Actually, compared to other specialty drinks. That's actually not bad. It's four things in it. Yeah, well, and the thing is, though, like if you walked in and and ordered it like this. They won't hate you for this one. If you ask for the Buddy the Elf Frappuccino, they'll hate you. But if you just say, I would like a matcha green tea frappuccino with peppermint syrup, whipped cream and sprinkles. Well, you would get the whipped cream anyway on a frappuccino, right? So you're really just asking for that frappuccino with peppermint syrup. And the Christmas sprinkles. And then you put some sprinkles on it. Man, that means that the matcha one already has like that much sugar (laughs) with the syrup. Yeah, I mean, the only only thing you're really adding to it is peppermint syrup, which is, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't have sugar in it. It does. but Maybe there's a sugar-free version. (laughs) Oh, well, uh, do they? I think oh, I don't know if they sell it at Starbucks, but you can get a sugar-free. Yeah, peppermint but I don't know if they syrup. have the the peppermint one is sugar-free. Don't know the oh, well, answer. To it's that. the holidays. What are you worried about that? All right, there's no January for a reason. No big deal. We're close enough. Let's just coast on through. All right, it's they, cute. That's a great idea for a drink. It absolutely is. I. Oof. It looks like Christmas, and it, it's nice. They basically say it tastes like mint candies or like mint chip without any of the chips. Uh, yeah, except that green tea is the base. And while I, I will absolutely sit down and drink a cup of green tea. You don't like the frappuccino oh, version? No, I do not. You could try it unsweetened. Do Maybe you would not prefer that. Like it. Um, just give me, just give me some green tea, and we'll we'll hold on that. Actually, you'll just stick with the peppermint mocha. Hey, man, some peppermint. Peppermint tea. That's good. Peppermint tea is wonderful. The right. Not, Not everyone's a fan. I wonder whose idea this was. Radio U. We are 11 days, 10 days away from Thanksgiving. Like, it's soon, man. We're going we're gonna to do this. <laughs> we're going to have Thanksgiving. Yes, we are. We're going to give <laughs> thanks. It's, everybody's ready. It's happening, man. <laughs> okay. Now, 
Uh, Thanksgiving has awkward moments. You know, we all come, even though we're family, by blood, you know, you end up with things where maybe we've ended up on different sides of the political spectrum. Uh, lots of different things that maybe we don't agree on. And that I makes think people save up and wait till Thanksgiving to get it all out then. So that might make for some awkward moments around the table. But I'll tell you, it could be so much worse. Uh, in Ionia County, Michigan, over the weekend, you had two brothers. They were out deer hunting. Mm-hmm. It's muzzle loader season, Nikki. Mm-hmm. So they're out oh, hunting. No. And uh, one of the brothers is like, there, shh, shh, shh. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, the elusive deer. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get the deer. I got this. All right. Nobody move. And then, you know. Shoot something. Mm-hmm. Turns out uh, what he actually shot was his brother. Oh, but he's fine. Well, well I mean, he, like he was still, he, he is, got shot, but he's, he's alive. alive. He's alive. And they had expected to, to make a full recovery. They had to air flight him out of there. Mm-hmm. And yes, they do expect him to recover. But, and I'm not just making light of this. But what do you do when you accidentally shot somebody? See, I thought about that. This is more, though, if if the brothers have, like, a really good relationship, like, this could be what you talk about every holiday, and it becomes the joke of the family. Like, he shot you. Well, don't shoot me. Yeah. I, I think as long as he's fine and he recovers well, it might actually be the story that your family always tells. I always wanted to go for a ride in a helicopter. Pretty much. <laughs> much. Kind of like that. Not too awkward. Uh I don't know, Nikki. It's kind of like the girl who got shot by her mom. She surprised she now, surprised her mom. And she's like, I'm back from school. Surprise! And her mom was like, oh! And shot her multiple times. Now, that one I feel was awkward. And I don't know why. So, <laughs> There's well, differences. Well, because they're hunting. You feel like a hunting accident is less awkward than, say, I, well, there's I came always home the and my chance. mom shot me. Yeah, like that was a real surprise. That's a real letdown. Your mom shoots you several times. Yeah, it's a bummer. There you're out hunting between brothers. And you're like, whoops. My bad. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you laugh off family things sometimes. Do you? Humor is the answer. Humor is how we cope sometimes. I feel like you, I, it seems like, I mean, we just mentioned two stories. Maybe there's a, a market out there for certain kinds of Hallmark cards. Like, I'm sorry I shot you. It feels like an e-card. You think so? Not, they're not actually oh, see, printing it. I actually disagree with that. You, I feel like it needs to be printed. It needs to be printed. Print. It's one of those big cards. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, look, I'm compensating here. <laughs> Okay. Sorry I, I shot you. I'm very sorry I shot you. Um, you know what? Why don't you shoot me back? No, no, that's not going to work. But you know what? We're going to work on something. I know it's the season because I see all the pickup trucks on the side of the road by the woods. And I'm like, oh, I think they must be out there hunting. Yeah. And part of me is like, how in the world do you mistake you know, your brother for a deer? But I've never been hunting. So I don't know in the moment. A little buck fever. The energy, the excitement in the air. I've just, I've not done it before. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Me, me either, Nikki. I'm not a. I'm not really much of a hunter. Well, I just I'll stay on the road in that I'm, area. <laughs> I'm not a uh, not a mountain man. I'm like an inside guy. <laughs> More basement. Yeah. If you're looking for all the funny moments you missed during the riot, we apologize. You won't find them here. There there weren't any. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Nikki, would you like to be my secret sister this year? Well, what does that mean? Well, it means you would buy me stuff. Well, I I buy you a Christmas present anyways. Yeah, but you could be my secret sister, too. That way I get two (laughs) things. Aren't those like the Facebook scam things? That's what... Okay. Yes, it is. (laughs) Uh, I was on Reddit last night, and they were like, sign up for the Reddit gift exchange, which I... (laughs) I actually think that one is a little more legit Mm -hmm. because I've seen that happen for years. But apparently there are some Facebook groups that uh, are all part of the secret sister thing. I sometimes see people post about it and they're always like, this one's not a scam. And then they proceed (laughs) to tell you about it. And you're just like, well, that makes me even worried more that it's a scam. It's definitely a scam. Now you just don't know. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, I did not know this, but the Better Business Bureau put out a like a warning, basically like, hey, everybody, (laughs) Secret sister Facebook gift exchanges are a scam. And so they 
I haven't really looked into it, but they say that it's literally a pyramid scheme and it's illegal. So the way they do it is money just keeps getting passed up the chain. Somebody's getting a hundred billion Christmas presents. Yeah. You end up not getting any. Aw, so you you're never the one who receives something. You're just giving paying for money and sending stuff out, but it's not going to you, it's going to the scammers. That's right. Mm. Bummer. Nope. Okay. Well, I guess we can't be secret sisters this uh season. Yeah, but Nikki Here's the thing is you could reclaim that name for good. <laughs> to start one? You could start it up. And I think can... it's nice because, I mean, it's basically for the scam side of it, preying on people who do not get a lot of support at Christmas, who want to, you get know, a gift. get a gift from someone or to feel friendship and stuff or yeah. send that out because there's others who don't. So you want to share that with someone. There's nothing wrong with that, but people will just ruin it. And they have. That's because there is always somebody somewhere looking to make a buck at your expense. Of everything that you want to do genuinely nice. Yeah. That you want to give someone a Christmas present or, uh, you know, share with someone on Facebook and you can't. You're not supposed to. Actually, now, you know what? I wasn't going to talk about this, but Nikki's right. And if you find yourself in this position, now would be a great time to go ahead and like kind of reach out to community. You're about two months away. You can either a, if you want to give gifts, uh, there's like there's lots of organizations of places you can do that or B, you know what, if you want to be a part of a gift exchange, so you're also getting something like hit up a community center, go to a church, find a, like find some places where community gathers and they'll have things like that. And that would be something that is, in fairness, could also be a scam. No, um, I mean, but yeah, but it's a greater like, likelihood that it's it's not going to be. It's less likely because you're physically present than, you know, the Facebook one. Yeah, you just have to be aware. Yes. So in, if you've seen someone post that, just, you know, remind them. Something to be aware of. <laughs> and again, especially if they're like, it's not a scam, but it is a scam. Yeah. That's the first sign. <laughs> that something is a scam. That it's a scam. <laughs> if Listen, they tell you it's not. This is not a scam. Oh. Okay, definitely a scam. But it still looks like a pyramid. <laughs> like like my friend that told me, look, it's not a pyramid scheme. It is. The riot. Just because it's bad doesn't mean it's not good. Wait, isn't that exactly what it means? It's the riot on Radio U. Hey, Nikki, how do your new dogs do with the Christmas tree? Christmas tree's not up yet. Oh, so you don't know. Have not experienced it yet. I don't know how we're going to do. Are you getting concerned? <laughs> well, uh, my dogs like to tear apart my plants. And oh, yes, I feel I, like I saw that. I feel like the Christmas tree ha- is just a bigger version of that. Oh. I, I thought seeing. <laughs> With my precious ornaments. <laughs> I thought seeing the picture Nikki took of her guilty looking dog next to all the broken plants was hysterical. Yeah, and I caught him eating my peace lilies. Those are something over the weekend. Just, you know, great. <laughs> Not my peace lilies. Stop eating. I'm trying to have peace, dang it. <laughs> you need my peace. You are completely eating them. And where those are is where I'm planning on putting the Christmas tree. And I am an ornament collector. It's the only thing I collect. If I go on a trip or something. Yeah, okay, wait. So my wait. ornaments mean something to me. Don't. Don't start there. Put the tree up with lights and nothing else. And just, or at least the the ones that don't matter, like just bulbs. Well, my thought was is that maybe if you wait, then you don't run the risk of breaking up a, a real meltdown. Yeah. No, I have a special uh, tie, like I basically tie on the ones that mean a lot to me. Yeah, but if the tree comes over, which I've is a never possibility, had anybody knock it over. Uh, but I have had a kit like my cat Panda likes to just whack him down. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joy having pets. It's a joy during the holidays. You always sell it to me real well. Well, I know you don't have any dogs. And it's a shame that yeah. you're missing out on all this. It's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's the best. But these are just the things that you have to work around. You have to be aware of. Do you have of. any tips or anything? Or? Well, actually, Nikki, I have an item that they say is perfect for pet owners. What is it? Well, you, you put a what? gate around it. That's what no, a lot of people say. No, it's a Christmas tree that, uh, look at the link I just sent you. It's uh, it's six feet tall, but half oh, the tree the is gone. Oh, missing. So, oh, that's when you're giving up. <laughs> but you can still have a tree. No, it looks terrible. You can still have a tree. It looks terrible. Why bother having a tree? Why? Oh. It's just the top little part. 
little tiny part. But it's still a tree. Yeah. And the rest of it looks like a scratching post. So, yeah. Well, actually, that might be more tempting for my cat. Well, I know. But, like, you could have your cat go over there and scratch, scratch, scratch. But it's not going to get to any of your special ornaments. So, for this point, these trees are only available in the UK. But they're saying if you like to go out and get a fresh tree and you cut it, then just... Take some of the lower branches Take off. Take the lower branches off, and that might help you out. There you go. What do you think? No, I, I'm going to probably have to put a gate around. <laughs> That's probably what I think. Oh. <laughs> my precious ornaments, but my precious puppies. I, you don't know what to do. That's why you can't have anything nice. <laughs> it's exactly, and I have said that out loud to my dogs many times. Have you? My mom will tell you the story about how when I was like two or three years old, she put the tree up and then covered it in candy canes. Yeah. And then she walked into the other room and she heard this loud noise and me screaming. And uh, I pulled the tree over on me oh, because I grabbed the candy cane. because you wanted to get cane. the candy cane. <laughs> Makes sense well, to me. No one told you not to. <laughs> so no kids, because Christmas is not for kids. And no pets. It's also not for pets. So you need to have a, a room where the Christmas tree is shut up <laughs> that only you can go into. <laughs> Man, you can just feel... Uh, I was thinking of putting it up on Saturday. I, I'm so excited now that you brought all this up. Glad we had this chance to talk. <laughs> the worst of the riot is over, but the fun can keep going. Hey, I saw you checking out my goods. Check the riot blog or stalk us on social media. You want to sample them? A little try before you buy, huh? Through riot.radiou.com. Oh, if I was a younger woman...